Beverage control and food control in an establishment are very similar in principle. Whether it's wine being stored in a cellar or a cucumber being stored in a chiller, the method of control is basically the same. One of the main aims of the beverage and food control systems is to ensure that products remain at a top level of quality for as long as possible. The requirements needed for each product may alter, but the objective remains the same. To begin with, let's take a look at the best practice for storing beers. 啤酒窖需要注意的事項很多,通常來講我們啤酒窖的溫度呢,最好保持在13到15度之間,空氣呢要流通,然後呢整個環境呢一定要乾淨衛生。Tapings need to be done the day before a cask is opened. Beer lines and cellar floors need to be cleaned weekly. Casks need to be treated with great respect and care. When they are bought in, the new stock should go to the back, old stock should come to the front so that the ageing beer is used first. As previously mentioned, what works for one beverage may not work for another. Storage needs may only differ slightly, but even small changes can set off a chain reaction. It's not always achievable, but storing wine in an underground location is widely recognised as one of the first steps needed for the best storage practice. If this isn't an option, not all is lost, as there are still a lot of elements that can and need to be controlled. Bajotsunjoy 那么整个的酒窖的环境一定要稳定 These storage systems are accessed by the establishment on a regular basis. With this in mind, it's important they remain stocked at an appropriate level. A bar will have a certain amount of stock at the beginning of the shift or even maybe at the beginning of the week to ensure that they don't run out. As the stock is consumed, they'll keep a record of that and at the end of a shift, they'll replace it. So this is a good system to use, a lot more efficient than running backwards and forwards to a cellar during a shift. Depending on the size of the establishment and its function, there may be very large or very small amounts of liquor being consumed on a regular basis. To help keep the whole system ticking over, there are lots of different procedures that may be used. Smaller establishments may find that they only need a few systems, while larger ones may need to utilise them all. There's a variety of different uh, beverage control systems, uh, those for maintaining the environment, uh, and particularly what's important is the maintaining inventory. And that includes uh, the order book, uh, that's where the orders, uh, the, well, the intended orders for the beverage establishment are placed, versus the received goods uh, book. And this is a list of the products that were actually received from the suppliers. The goods return book is a ledger that keeps track of items that are returned to suppliers. Just the same as a returnable containers book will keep track of the containers that are returned to suppliers. The seller ledger keeps track of items that have come into the seller and then go out. The requisition book is for restocking uh, orders and the daily consumption sheet is used for restocking supplies in separate areas. Nobody wants to fill out the eulage book because this is for goods that have been spilled or damaged or just simply misused. The off-sales book is for goods that have been sold for off-sales prices. And then the transfer book is used when, when stock or goods is moved from one service area to another, just to keep track of where that stock is. Similar to the beverage control system is the food control system, but it's still unique in itself. When stock arrives at the establishment, it is usually the responsibility of the purchasing department, or in larger cases, a specialised department to receive those goods. The stock first needs to be checked to make sure that what has been ordered has in fact arrived, and with the quality and quantity expected. When you receive your goods, uh, it's really fundamental that you, you're paying attention to what you've got. First, firstly, there's a match-up between what your order was, um, the quality of that order, 
and the number of the items within that. This makes sure that you're obviously paying for what you've, you've, uh, you're getting and you've also got the right products for the job that you're trying to achieve. The steps that need to be taken when you're receiving stocks from suppliers have become really important and also linked to legislation. Some of the things that you may be looking for is the quality, the quantity, the temperature, where the item has been delivered and certainly the condition of the item. One really important aspect of course would also be the price on the delivery docket. It should always be the same as what was agreed when the purchase was first made. If you find that any issues arise around any of these aspects when it comes to delivery, work very hard with the supplier to ensure that all issues can be cleared up. Just as in any other industry, time is money. The longer it takes for stocks to be sorted through and records to be taken, the more wages need to be paid. Having good systems in place to begin with can help staff members be more efficient. However, it's not only through the cost of wages that an establishment can begin to make unnecessary losses. If stock takes too long to transfer into the cellars, storerooms and freezers, the products can begin to spoil. Dishonesty is sad, but this can happen. The theft from staff can happen at any time in your business and it has a major effect on your business for a loss and overall toll and damage to your business. One of the best ways to avoid dishonesty from suppliers or simple misunderstandings is to fully utilise the delivery docket and invoice systems. As expected, the delivery docket is given to the establishment at the time the products are delivered. This is different from an invoice, and so it doesn't ask for payment. However, it should contain the item name, the product quantity, and the supplier's identification number. This delivery docket can be then used alongside the invoice to ensure that what they are paying for matches what they received. The invoice is just a fancy word for the word bill. Um, the, the supplier is responsible for sending the invoice to the restaurant and then the person who does the accounts for the restaurant will make sure that the bill is paid within the time period that the supplier and the restaurant agreed on. First of all, it notifies who is in the, the relationship, by who the product is coming from, who it's going to. Uh, it talks about the product item, what product items are we using, the quantity, uh, potentially the unit value of each of those um, products, and then the total value will also probably uh, include a breakdown of GST in a total, and uh, tends to also include payment details. Developing and maintaining good business relationships between suppliers and your establishment is important. To help foster these connections, it's important that the supplier delivers products on time and at the standard requested. In the same way, it's important that the receivers of goods pay the full amounts of the invoices on time. There's lots to keep in mind when looking at the food and beverage control systems needed for a successful business. Next, we'll conclude this series by looking at the different styles of service in the industry.